Hello, I'm Bolton and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to uh, do probably the first half of my uh, PlayStation 1 collection so far. So I'm going to talk about games that I've got and I'll try to only keep this going for about 10-12 minutes max. Then you'd have to wait for part 2 later on when I get around to doing it. Um, so, let's just talk about the PS1 first. My, my history with the PS1. I got only got a PS1 very late on in 1998. I only used the Mega Drive up to then. I occasionally used the Saturn, and I have used them. I use Sega Saturn now and again at a friend's house, an N64, and I was very excited. Um, my uncle took me out on it, and he got me this PS1. And I remember only having it for about three days before it weirdly went missing and it came back and then my uncle came back with about like 40 copied games or something and they were like okay I've got what I play copied games okay this is this was one of my first instances as well into the world of modification and console modding as well was the old PS1 get it chipped uh, personal opinion on it though it's worth getting chipped because there's a lot of worthwhile uh, American Games, games that only came out in America or Japan, so it's worthwhile doing. So uh, games, uh, one of the main, first main main consoles that hit off the CD revolution. Um, there have been obviously ones before Philips CDI, 3 d uh, the Neo Geo CD, uh, the Mega CD, obviously, but those uh, Neo Geo real popular in Japan never really hit off in Europe. Uh, Mega CD again never really hit off because it was just bad. And as for Philips CDI and the 3DO, never really saw much of that in the in in my country at the time. But I was young, so who knows? Probably was popular, and I didn't know about it. Okay, but l let's begin then with some games. I've got I've got I'm gonna, I've got a pile here, and you've seen the top one. I'll move it a bit there, so keep it a bit of surprise. First game here. One of the first games that I ever played on the system, Tomb Raider 2, featuring, no, starring, Lara Croft. Um, this was my first instance into the Tomb Raider genre of games, these adventure games. I've never played all like it, I were only used to Sonic games and bad sports games, and occasionally some bad uh, adventure games. This was the first instance of me seeing full 3D polygons and I think, and I thought it was beautiful, <laughs> beautiful game. Uh, one of the first games that I got for the system, so I had me hooked, and they were one of the first original games I had for the system as well. Um, but, yeah. uh, but that's number two. There was, I think, five in total on the, no, six, I believe, on the PlayStation 1, Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2, Tomb Raider 3, Tomb Raider The Last Revelations, and Tomb Raider Chronicles as well, actually, thinking about it. Now this, because I'm living in the Netherlands. Uh, Tomb Raider, the last on um, basically meaning the la the last revolution, revolution, revolution. Again, uh, this is just an updated version, updated graphics, updated sounds, updated lighting, updated everything. Practically full, a bit of a hub overall, and it was the last one of the main series. They did release Chronicles, but that wasn't really. That did not go down well with a lot of people. Okay, uh, next game is Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. This was another game that I got with the system at the time when I first had it. And I was used to Sonic games, so I saw this and I thought it was beautiful. I mean, this like full motion, kind of full motion video backgrounds, but the graphics, the sprite work was fantastic. And the sound, I remember hearing it for the first time and thinking, the voices are clear, everything is clear. Obviously I'm used to Sega's and let's face it, the Mega Drive didn't have the best sound, it was very tinny at best. But yeah, that's Oddworld, it was and again this is one of the first games that I played for it. Uh, next one, I had this on PC and I've picked this up very recently, like this first pile actually. The first one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, seven games I've actually picked up very recently for a very good price. This one I have seen skyrocket in price. It's quite, I believe it's quite rare. 
because not a lot of people know about it and it's kind of a little gem. If you have the mouse, I recommend getting it for this. Um, Z, the Bitmap Brothers. Z or Z, the Bitmap Brothers. It's a strategy game in the vein of Command and Conquer, but it's more of a resource strategy game. So it's about um, you've got to go after this thing here, and you've got to get, go to another building. Um, not resource. Um, yeah, build, not building either. It's more of a come, let's take over territory based. Game and um, the more territory that take over, the easier it is and for you to win. But you've got to fight off another team. But the main thing about this is, um, Bitmap Brothers are actually a group from Electronic Arts, and I'll show you over here. And they're specialised in this, like, that is some very dark humour as well in the games. I mean, this is just you've got some, you got some great satire in here to, like, you know. American generals and just American personnel in general, and yeah, it's a, one of the best strategy games for the system. And now this is shooting up in price. I've seen this go for about eighty euros on eBay. Which I'm very happy that I only paid a few bucks for it. Uh, this one I've seen a lot of it actually, and I wanted to get it. And I've seen a lot of people on about it saying, "Oh, it's a very interesting game." And I've never read it before, so I was a bit like, okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll try in different ones. And that was Galarians. I'm giving it a shot. I'll kind of like the survival on the genre. One of my favourite games of all time are from the survival horror genre. And this game did this point. It's not horror. Um, it's, uh, yeah, best way to describe it. Uh, yeah. It's all side, very side, um, not side. I can't, I can't describe it in a good way. It's all about having psychic powers and you get different psychic powers. The thing that I like about this actually, you can't take your time as well. You always feel the rush because you have this, um, you have a thing called AP, and once that goes to the top, you'll your body will start to electrocute itself. You know, create a lot of power, and you need to take certain medication to bring that down. And it goes up very quick, so you just so constantly you're racing against that as well, as well as trying to get through the game. Uh, so far, I'm only on the first disc with it, but I can kind of, can pretty much say this is this is one of those games that go well, that will go unnoticed, and I believe it should be worth more than what it is. And ooh, reflection. Next game. <laughs> uh, which one first? Let's do this. I got this one in the same bundle as them, well, apart from the same one part of the bundle, but this, um, Medal of Honor, Underground, sequel to Medal of Honor, uh, the game franchise that has carried on now and has gone very much downhill because EA really don't care about it anymore, um, um, yeah, it's a first person shooter, not much to say, to be honest, this is worthless to me, I'm not really a big Medal of Honor fan, I was at the time, but not now, I've kind of gone off it. <laughs> okay, this one, this game, this game. I remember getting this game. Um, but first, at first, I was getting this in England. And the thing that made me laugh about it was the old premise of it. You know, fighting terrorists on a train. But the thing that caught my eye to it was it looked very the control schemes they're very reminiscent of Resident Evil and I like that sort of games they're all going back and forth back and forth I like those games so I picked this up I wasn't disappointed it's not one of the best games ever I will admit it's not it's not going to win any awards but to me I'm happy and that is Chase the Express for the PlayStation 1 obviously this is PS1 uh, oh it's got, it goes over two discs yeah, what's it? You're fighting terrorists, it's got bad voice acting, and you're on a train. First thing that I thought of, Under Siege. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's a fun game, it can get a bit repetitive because you're on a train. Obviously, so a lot of the characters do look the same, but it's all, it's all part of the fun. It's all part of the fun. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go into the next pile here, actually. What have we got? I'll do them two together, I believe. Okay, you've seen one of them. <laughs> this is Darkstalkers, the Night Warriors, 
for the uh, PlayStation 1, obviously. This is 2D Fighter game. I've been wanting this, actually. I've been wanting to get into the Dark Stalker franchise. And now that I've played it, I want to get everything. I do want to get every single Dark Stalker game. I like the characters. The character sprites are really good. And on the PS1, it surprisingly don't have any lag. And to say that at the time, Capcom and Sony in general didn't really want a lot of these 2D games that, that could play on the other systems. They wanted to concentrate on um, 3D, but the fact that they released this, it's gorgeous. And yeah, I can recommend this to any any person who's a fan of fighting games, get Dark Stalkers. You won't disappoint. The only downside is that with this being one of the first ones on the system, it's got a very limited roster. Only about 10 characters in total. But every character is very unique and very good. Okay, next one. Okay, Twisted Metal. Uh, you'll remember this from my first ever video games pickups video. Actually, uh, yeah, let's say about this. It's one of those racing games, but your car's got guns, so it's a cat just carnage destruction game. It's very fun. Only problem is now, you, you if you're used to modern car controls on video games, this is going to be a pain in the ass because everything is on the joystick. Everyone is on the joystick to you know gas on. Oh. Break, back, turn, left, right, so it's, the control scheme sucks. Shall I say that? But the game, the game can be fun, and it's really fun to play a split screen with a friend. But that's Twisted Metal. Okay, the next one is The Adventures of Alundra. Now, um, this obviously isn't the original game that I have. This is a new one that I purchased. But the game, I remember first getting this for £12 at my local market in where I came from. And it wasn't even in a video game shop, it was just in some random, it was just in some random stall in the market and got a person wanted £12. When the PS1 was still a valid option. And I got, I got it because it looked, it looked cool. I thought, I thought, ooh, I like the picture on the throne. I was only young. And um can like I say one of the best adventure games in the style of the old Zelda style games that I have ever played. This in America uh, was released through Working Designs, which happens to be one of the best uh, now is becoming one of the best and the rarest games are always now working design games. Um, not much to say about it though. Uh, quick review of the story. You're 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 this like lad called Lundra. You've come ashore and everything's going to put on this this island where you are, and you're practically you're just you're trying to fix it, <laughs> but you're fighting like monsters and everything. It's a really good game. I really recommend it to anyone who's interested. Okay, this will be the last two for this half, for this part anyway. It might have to be a three part like this. Got a lot of games. I'll move them over. Okay, last two I'll do together. Sorry about that. Um, I had someone at the door. Okay. Right, the next lot of games uh, are Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid Special Missions. You need this to play this. There's not really much to say about them. Everyone knows what Metal Gear Solid is. This was one of the first. This is the first Metal Gear game on a CD platform, I believe. And it really, and it's, it's not the first game. A lot of people did think that this was the first game, but it's actually been released on the NES, I believe, or the first one. And then you had games on the MSX and in Japan, and you had a few more, I think, as well. On I think I think you had a Commodore port, not hundred percent, but this was the first one. Um, full 3D stealth game, brought stealth element to the masses. And everyone, and once everyone's people played this, everyone wanted more games with stealth. Um, story, you know this. If you if you know anything about the PlayStation, you know this is one of the best games for it. Um, but that's not the interesting one. The interesting one is this. Uh, this has extra missions because uh, it's all the VR missions from the. You have VR missions in the first game, but in this one you have more. 
and it's more like and there's like you know loads of little bonuses and everything and yet this, it's recommended it's not a good game it's not it can be fun but I don't recommend getting it unless you're a collector um, if you want if um, if you find it for a good price pick it up because this one is worth more than the actual game this is like some DLC package right here this is a DLC package for that so but yeah that is Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid Special Missions um, again thank you for watching this has been part one of my PlayStation games I am Bullet Math and have a great day